Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Back with more Psalms, and yeah, again with Sunday, it kind of, things kind of got a little loop de doop de and didn't get a video out like I thought I would, so I'm going to put out four videos today, two more Dark Souls, two more Psalms. 30 minute message I think will come tomorrow, pretty sure. <clears throat> Not going to promise, because, you know, just in case, who knows what's going to happen, but we're going to see what, we'll see what happens, we'll see how it goes. So... Let's move on to Psalm chapter 8, where I'm going to stay in this psalm yet again, because I saw something very pertinent that I thought was like really, it was really good and needs to be addressed. And I'm not sure how many people know this. Well, whoever watched this video is going to know it now. It's Psalm chapter 8, verse 2. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. Now, if you go over into the New Testament, I will let you do the homework as to where this is. Jesus says, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected strength. Now that, or I'm sorry, thou hast perfected praise. Blah. I was, I'm looking at the verse here. So that is radically different from what's here. So the question could be, you know, is the Hebrew word for strength and praise the same word? Or maybe in the Greek, it's the same word. There's one possible explanation. And the answer is, no, that's actually not the explanation here. Another explanation could be, well, the Bible's simply wrong and contradicts itself. I do not believe that. There may be some minor errors here and there. As I've discussed previously, the Bible isn't a perfect book in the fact that there are, there are typos in there. But as far as meaning, the meaning of various verses, those are intact, and they don't really conflict with one another. Even the parts that are in question, there's really not a conflict of interest anywhere in the Word of God. And if there is, it's very, very few and far between. However, this is a very definite conflict of interest, and there's no um, textual dispute here. This psalm is what it is. That verse in the Gospels is what it is. So... I'll say, is there an explanation other than the Bible's wrong or the words are the same thing? There is an explanation. And the explanation is the Septuagint. The Septuagint was the Greek Bible of Jesus' day. A bunch of people got together and said, hey, it'd be great if the Old Testament were in the um, common tongue of our day. And so they got together and they made it. They made an edition of the Bible in the common tongue of their day. And it was called the Septuagint. And it was widely used even in Israel. Israel was speaking Aramaic at this point, not um, the old Hebrew anymore. I forget the cultural historical reason for that, but they were, so Jesus and the apostles, they spoke Aramaic, not Hebrew. So I, I th I'm pretty sure the, sc I'm, yeah, the scholars and them, they still read the Hebrew Old Testament and then they disseminated that information to the people. But the common person read the Septuagint. Jesus being a rabbi, I don't know what actual training he did, but the fact that he could talk to scholars and stuff at age of 12, it's a very good indication that he probably became, could have become a rabbi. Um, I know he also was a carpenter as well. He was known as a carpenter. Did he actually, actually go to rabbinical school? There we do not know. These are all historical, um, these are historical presuppositions and assumptions, and I will admit that, and I don't know the exact answer. Did he or did he not? Well, no one knows because it's not recorded anywhere. He certainly could have been with his intelligence. And not just the whole, yeah, he was God in the flesh. No. If he is debating scholars at the age of 12, um, we, it, it, of all the things that he could have been, a prodigy at the very least he was. That sounded like Yoda. But moving onward, he definitely could have taught, he definitely could have been a rabbi. He definitely had the ability to do so. Did he? We don't know. But we know for this, at least in this one instance, he did not quote the Hebrew. Or if he did, it, was not, it wasn't carried forth in um, whichever of the synoptic gospels wrote it. Again, I'm going to let you do the homework on that. So, either Jesus said it in, in, the, um, in the Septuagint or the author wrote it in the Septuagint. Either way, we have Jesus talking from the Septuagint. So he was quoting the common Bible of his day. And the Septuagint does differ quite radically from the original Hebrew at several points, just as this one, as this one point here indicates. That's very, thou, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength is very, very different from out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. Very, very different meaning. 
So which one's the right one? Maybe Matthew's in error, and th and that is crap. I said it. Doggone it all. Oh, glitches. Oh, well. Anyway. Fine. You don't have to do your homework this time. I goofed. <laughs> anyway. Now I'm like, was it in Matthew? Pretty sure it was in Matthew. But anyway, so Matthew got it wrong. I'm going to go ahead and say now that I got it wrong, now, now that I goofed. So which is the correct one? Matthew or Psalms? Septuagint or the or the Hebrew Old Testament, which one got it right? And my argument is going to be that both got it right. What I would say is that, well, one, I think theologically a good strong case can be made for both points, and that that that's not just 30 minute messages, that might be a series of 30 minute messages. I think I can make a very strong point that both are true statements. However, even without the theology, I would say, yeah, the Word of God says both, and both are true. Now, I can say that much more firmly since I've looked into the matter of praise and worship. And um, I'll, I'll say in praise and worship and strength can be, they're very closely identified on a spiritual level. But because I've looked into that, I can say it much more assuredly on the other points. And there, there are other points between the Gospels and the Old Testament where it's like, that looks weird. What? This isn't what the Old Testament says. Well, it's what it says in the Septuagint. In a lot of cases, I could say, in this one specifically, both are true. Both are right. It's not a, a lack of, it's not a matter of ignorance. Again, I believe that Jesus probably knew Hebrew. He easily could have been a scholar and a rabbi of his time. Um, and I don't think he would, I don't think he would misquote scripture. So in this point, they're both true. And I think in a lot of points, they're both true. Also, a lot of the authors of the of the New Testament, they knew the Hebrew as well as the Septuagint. They knew both. If they quote one or the other, it isn't a matter of simply quoting whichever one favors their argument. Of course, you could say that. But what I would say is, since they were inspired by God, since they're trying to be, and since they were trying to record the truth as accurately as possible, they're not just going to quote whatever favors them. They're going, to they're going to quote what they believe to be true and right. Either way, whether it's faith in the inspired word of God or faith in the men who wrote it, it does boil down to faith. It, and it boils down to each and every in, individual incident. And so what I'm hoping that this message does will explain this one particular thing, at least to some degree, will definitely give you an idea of where this particular quote and Matthew, now that you know who he is, was coming from, and hopefully it'll inspire you to study and look into the various other incidents in the New Testament. If something doesn't look quite right, keep in mind that there and keep in mind that there are answers. Just the fact that the Septuagint exists, that's an answer. It's there. Boom. And this message has gone way long. I, I've I haven't gone this long in quite a while, but I wanted to give us some detail here because we're talking about a translation of the Bible. We're talking about a core component of interpreting the New Testament correctly and understanding the Word of God. I thought that deserved a little bit of time. And I didn't want to do a full 30-minute message. I just want to talk about the psalm here. So there you go. Eight and a half minutes of goodness right there. Thank you very much for watching. I love you and God bless.